Hello, creative friends, crochet friends. This is Patricia from patriciafenty.com. And if you are a crocheter or a knitter, you will have countless tail ends. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can create this, this fabric uh, using a type of a, a quilting technique. And you can turn all your tail ends into fabric that you can use for any project that you like. And I'm gonna use mine to make a purse, but you can make a, a, a quilt, you can make a vest, a jacket, you can do any kind of bags. Basically, whatever you would use fabric for, you can use this fabric for. And it's kind of a quilted fabric, so it's a bit stiff. This is not a tutorial on how to sew a project. It is how you can turn your tail ends into a really funky looking fabric that you can use for any project you like. So let's get started. So what you're gonna need is of course all your tail ends of yarn. And this is gonna be done on a sewing machine. We're gonna be using a, a, a quilting technique on the sewing machine. So you're going to need this attachment for the sewing machine. I don't remember what it's called. I'll write it up here. And you could hand stitch this. You could quilt it by hand stitching. So you could totally do that. I'm not going to demonstrate how to do that. I'll demonstrate how to do it on the sewing machine. So you need a sewing machine with this foot. Uh, you will need some straight pins and scissors. And you may want, uh, this type of tool to measure and make markings on the fabric because when I make this quilting fabric I'm going to quilt it onto the actual fabric so you'll need some fabric to quilt it onto. Um, I have actually two layers here because I want it to be quite thick because it's going to be a purse so this will be the lining side and this is going to be the fabric that is going to have the funky design on it and what I've done is I've cut the pattern out and I've drawn along the outside edge where the seam allowance is because I'm gonna keep all my yarns within the seam allowance. I don't want them going out into the seam allowance. I don't want to be sewing through that much thickness. Um, so that's what you can use this for if you like. You may make a totally different project, but that's up to you. And then what you're gonna need is some of this tooling, this veiling. Now I just got a very neutral color, so you're not gonna really see the, the netting on top, but these come in so many colors. So of course you could pick you know, like a pink or a purple or black or whatever, you know, you could pick a, a, a fun color and use that. And then of course you're going to need some, some quilting, or not quilting thread, you can use just regular sewing thread. And I'm just gonna use black, black in the bobbin and black in the top. So again, you can, if you wanted, you could use metallic thread uh, or a really colorful thread, it's up to you. I'm just gonna use the black and I believe that is all that we need. And of course, quantities will depend on the project that you will be making. All right, so what you're going to do, in order to create a really nice modeled effect, we're going to do something to these yarns that I haven't seen anybody really do. And that is that we're going to pull all the plies apart. So if you're using a number four medium weight yarn, your yarns are gonna have four plies. Um, this is a really great project to use any weight yarn that you have. So you could even use like embroidery floss in here. And so this is going to be a little bit fussy, but it's great to do while you're watching maybe one of your favorite shows. And you're going to pull all the plies apart and you're going to create a pile of individual plies of yarn in all different sizes and uh, in length. So you can mix in some long ones and you can use even the shortest pieces that you have, like the little tiny, tiny tidbits. And so you're going to create a big pile. And if you want to go with a color scheme, you can like do all cool colors or all uh, warm colors. I'm going to mix everything up. Uh, putting in a bit of black. Now that's a long piece, so I'd probably cut that into a few smaller pieces. So there you go. Sit down, have a cup of tea, and 
pull all those plies apart and create a nice big pile. So here you go. We have a nice little pile where we've pulled all the, the strands apart, all the plies apart. And you can see the difference. What, what this is going to do, this is going to give a, a more sort of modeled look and the yarns are going to sort of blend together really nice and soft. Whereas if you were to just keep them in the, the chunkier pieces here, you'd look at this even once it's embroidered and it'll look like yarn. This is going to look like a completely different um, type of fabric. So all you're gonna do once you have your pieces pulled apart, you just sort of wanna blend them so you get the colors all mixed up nicely. If you wanted, and I don't have a tool to do this, you know, those carting things they use when they're carting wool, you could do that and this would like then pull the fibers apart even more and it would be even more blended. Um, but anyways, once you have it like this, we're going to lay it on the fabric. So you're just going to lay all these strands on your piece of fabric and just uh, lay it out flat. And I'm going to stay within my seam allowance because as I said earlier, I don't want to be sewing in these fibers into the seam allowance. So I'm just going to lay this out and you want the fibers to be somewhere sort of between three eighths and a half, half an inch thick. And I'm gonna just lay them all out and make them nice and even. I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back. All right, here we go. So I did fuss with this quite a bit to um, make sure all the strands were nice and evenly dispersed throughout the fabric. I did pull the, some of the black strands out to lay on top because they kind of got lost in there. And yeah, and so I did, I was quite fussy to keep this within the seam allowance because that's the project that I'm making. You may want to make just really funky abstract patches and make like an abstract patchwork quilt perhaps, or um, you may have a, a piece that you're going to put say on the back of a denim jacket and you just go right to the edge in that case. So it's totally up to you. So once you have all the strands of yarn laid out the way that you want it. Now we're going to start the quilting process. So you're going to take your netting and you're going to lay that on top. And let's see here. You'll just lay that on top. So of course you can't see this in the camera, but the netting is just laying flat on top. And then we're simply just going to pin this down uh, to the best of your ability and just sort of go around and pin the netting in place. And you wanna lay some pins also in the middle of the fabric, just like that, just to sort of hold everything in place. So go ahead and pin that down and then we are going to go to the sewing machine next. All right, so here we are at the sewing machine and I am going to do uh, a stitch I'm just using an embroidery foot here and I'm just going to stitch all the way around so I can enclose all the threads because uh, if you don't, they'll sort of sprawl out <laughs> into the edges here. And again, I'm wanting to keep my seam allowances clean. So I'm just gonna do a quick little stitch and I'm just using a basic uh, normal needle size, normal stitch size, the embroidery foot. And I'm not gonna turn my light on because that shows funny in the camera and I'm literally just going to use I'm going with a three quarter inch stitch and I'm just going to stitch all the way around because that way when I do the 5 8 stitch it'll be just on the outside of the 5 8 stitch and please forgive any weird noises and stuff this isn't my usual way of filming and doing things um, but yeah, so I'm just going to close in all of this netting on top of here and then I'll be back. All right, so I've got that sewn all the way around. <coughs> Excuse me, and I've left some pins in just to sort of hold the netting in place on top of all the fibers. So now we're gonna switch over to this. This is the darning foot. And this is the foot that you'll need. Now, of course, as I said earlier, you can do all of this um, top stitching by hand. You can do like hand embroidery if you like. 
Um, but this is just sort of a fun way. And of course, if you're a sewer and a quilter, you'll know how to do all of this. And what we're going to do is a very random style of quilting. So you can just hold this tail off to the back here. And I'm going to start in the middle, put the presser foot down. And this is like a free form quilting. So you can do a pattern if you like, or you can just go in a random pattern pattern like I'm going to do. I'm going to start by actually doing a bit of a spiral um, and just go off in all different directions. So here we go. Okay. And this is gonna be kind of, you know, bunchy and, and there'll be areas that will be all puffy in the beginning, but you're going to be doing quite a bit of stitching over all of this. And in, and in the end, it'll be all flattened out. And so I'm just starting with this, you know, basic spiral kind of design. And then I'm going to be doing some crisscross and back and forth and sort of do um, different kind of spirally things. So once I've, I've got this spiral done, I'll come back and I'll show you how that's going. Okay, so you can see here how I've sort of have worked a spiral in and um, I haven't finished down here yet, but I've done a little bit of sort of just abstract up here. And then, you know, you can just do things like um, spirals and so just kind of going like this and just going over all the stitching again, doing sort of just in all different directions. I mean, you can try to do a perfect pattern, but I'm just sort of just going all willy nilly. It's a <laughs> perfect way to, to just be sort of willy nilly with all of this and have no specific design. It's just all free form. And I'm down in this area here where I haven't stitched at all and kind of have to, you know, with your fingers, hold the, the, the yarns down until you get a nice bit of quilting in there. And this uh, darning foot is really fun because you can just move the fabric around in all different kinds of directions. So, so uh, like like that and so ke just keep going um doing all that top stitching you're going to use a lot of yarn here um, but just keep doing it until you have a nice um filled in space and you can see kind of here how i did that and so it makes it nice and flat and you don't have really sort of poofy areas sticking up too much so go ahead and do that i'm going to finish up here and i'll be back when i'm all done so I thought I'd just quickly pop in here and show you how I'm making out. And so you can see here that the stitch pattern is more intense up here. There's quite a bit of stitching and just randomly um, moving around compared to say down here and these, this is more puffy. So you wanna have the stitching quite uh, dense in order for the fabric to lay nice and flat. So just random stitching, carry on. Welcome back. So I went ahead and I did my uh, second panel as well. This was the panel I was demonstrating on in the tutorial. I didn't really like the way all the black turned out in there. So this one, I didn't lay the black strands on top. And also I got the knack of the freeform uh, top stitching, the freeform embroidery a little better. So you can see the back here. So I did quite a bit of stitching to really sort of pack those strands of yarn down and it makes for nice durable fabric uh, especially if you're having two layers of fabric like that so this is going to be a nice sturdy fabric for a purse and yeah so i think this is just such a fabulous way to use up all those little tail ends those little snippets everything from just a tiny little piece to longer tail ends and uh, you can make 
any number of projects with this fabric. I just think the possibilities are endless. So I will pop in and show you my finished project using this technique. Welcome back. So this is the project that I made using the fabric with the scrap yarn. And so it's a little backpack and I've got a, whoopsie, a front pouch here for my phone, little side zipper entrance, and then the straps on the back. And I must say this totally challenged my sewing skills. I, I did win a sewing scholarship when I was in high school. That was like 40 years ago, but I didn't keep up with sewing over the years. So the skills were there, but they were <laughs> challenging to come forward. So anyways, um, I just think this is such a great project. And this was the pattern that I used. It's McCall's, what is that, 9261. It's a vintage pattern. So, you know, I mean, if you wanted to do something like this, there's all kinds of patterns out there that you could use to um, use that fabric. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make scrap yarn into fabric that you can use for any number of projects. Thank you for joining me.